planning your successful habit transition. You now know how to break bad habits and form new empowering ones. The problem is that making these transitions is not an easy thing to do. You are going to be implementing a number of changes in your life, and the best way to give you the most chance of success is through the creation of a plan. Habit Formation Phases You may not be surprised to know that there are three main phases to habit formation. These are 1. Honeymoon Phase 2. Critical Phase 3. Second Nature Phase These phases are not always linear, moving naturally from one to another, and sometimes you can find that you go in and out of the different phases. You need to be aware of what all these phases mean so that you can monitor your progress effectively. Honeymoon Phase As the name suggests, this is the new, exciting, and fun phase of habit formation. It is like when you first meet someone and fall in love. You have more zest for life, and you are motivated to make any changes necessary to keep this going. The problem with the honeymoon phase is that it only lasts for a certain period of time. At some stage, reality will kick in, and you will automatically enter the next phase. This is a shame, just as it is with new relationships, but it happens, so you need to take this into consideration. Critical Phase After the honeymoon phase comes the critical phase. This is a vulnerable time, as you can start to have doubts about everything just like in a relationship. You start to think whether your new exercise habit is really worth all of the trouble. Motivation is a lot weaker during this phase. The good news is that you can survive the critical stage if you approach it properly. The first thing you need to do is to recognize that there is a problem. If your motivation is waning, then remind yourself that forming a new habit is tough. Then you need to decide whether you will carry on or not. We want you to stick to your new routine, so ask yourself, how will I feel if I fail with my new routine? Think about the great feelings you have already experienced with your new routine and make these feelings strong within you. The final step to get through the critical phase is to visualize your life in the longer term after the routine becomes a habit. See yourself fitter and looking good if your habit is around exercise. How will you look in one year's time? What about five years' time? If you stop your routine now, you will not look as good, will you? Second nature phase. You can probably guess what this phase is all about. When you get here, your new routine or routines will feel second nature to you. They're getting closer to becoming an automatic habit. But there are a couple of things that can make you head back to the critical phase, so you need to be careful. Something may change in your life that could cause a disruption to your routine. The other thing that can happen is that you experience feelings of discouragement again like you did in the critical phase. If either of these things happen, then always focus on the long-term aim to provide you with the inspiration and motivation to see the habit through. Your Habit Transition Plan You need a good plan to enable you to keep going with your routine or routines. We recommend the following three steps to create the best habit transition plan. 1. Create a list of your small steps and long-term goals. 2. Eliminate unwanted results. 3. Associate desired behaviors. Let's take a look at each of these in turn. Creating a list of your small steps and long-term goals. It is very important that you use the power of visualization to see your long-term goals as a reality. This will make you much more likely to stick to your habit transitions because you will see what your life will be like in the future. It is not always easy to visualize long-term goals properly, so it is important to identify smaller steps that will help you to make progress towards these longer-term goals. So. If your long-term goal is to be physically fit and ripped, then a smaller step is to perform a simple exercise routine every day, for example. The important thing with the smaller steps is that they all dovetail into your longer-term goal. By writing a list of these steps, you can ensure that this happens. This is an essential step to take if you are attempting to break a number of bad habits and form new ones at the same time. So, for the fitness goal, some smaller steps could be simple exercises each day, following a healthier diet, going to the gym three times a week, and so on. All of these small steps make visualization easier. Eliminate unwanted results. This is all about removing temptations from your path. If you want to be fit, then it is not a great idea to fill your kitchen with candies or snacks that are unhealthy, for example. Of course, you can never completely eliminate everything. Maybe someone comes to visit and brings something delicious with them. Going off the rails occasionally is okay. Make a list of the things that could result in you failing with your routine or routines. Visualize the potential pitfalls in your journey. Remove any distractions that are likely to cause a disruption for you. Sometimes things can just happen that could distract you. If you always go for a run at a certain time each day and somebody approaches you to do something else at that same time of day, then you need to see this as a potential disruptor. You need to be strong here and politely tell them that you can't do it. Associated Desired Behaviors This is a simple process of associating desired behaviors to things that you already do in your life. You can also use this as a way of avoiding possible disruptions. So, for example, 
If you always run at 7 p.m. each evening and you know that your friend has a habit of turning up around that time, then set out a few minutes earlier so that you can avoid this problem. Let's say that you want to achieve two different goals at once. One of these is to be fit and the other is to learn a new skill. What you could do here is find some audio recordings that will help you develop your new skill and listen to this while you are exercising. Your morning routine is essential. Having a good morning routine will set the tone for your day. If you start your day off in the right way, then you will have more energy and be more efficient and productive throughout the day. Studies have shown that we only have so much willpower, and this dissipates slowly as the day goes on. Each decision that we make, however small, contributes to this dissipation. So having a great morning routine will help to minimize the number of decisions that you need to make the rest of the day. Another great reason for a good morning routine is that it provides us with a greater sense of control over our life. It can help you to minimize any anxiety because you know what you are going to be doing each day. So, add a good morning routine to your plan. Do things that will make you feel positive and energized first thing. Create a task list for the things that you need to achieve for the day. In this way, there is no anxiety for you at the start of your day, and this will make you feel very positive about the rest of it. In the next video, we will discuss how you can reinforce new habits.